It's definitely a continuity, uh, a continuity decision. And in that case, I think the markets take it well. Maybe the most interesting difference between Lael Brainerd and, um, uh, and uh, Jay Powell is on bank supervision rather than their attitude towards inflation. And maybe one of the reasons why banks were happy is because they have Powell, who uh, probably is a bit of a lighter touch. Uh, and, uh, and that might be one of the, the conversations which takes place in terms of the supervision, in terms of the, uh, the, the um, approval of the renomination. But, but, but that's at the, per, uh, the periphery at the moment as well. We're not talking about uh, a concerted effort from Democrats on Capitol Hill uh, to push for tighter bank regulation at the moment. I don't believe any more changes to the Volcker rule, whether Elizabeth Warren thinks Jay Powell's a dangerous man or not, uh, is the key issue at the moment. I guess the key issue is, as Janet Yellen pointed out, and as I think you were going to allude to, is what about this inflation story as well? Uh, even the Treasury Secretary now beginning to get a little bit worried. The uh, Treasury's, yes, they pick it up to one six. Although still not at our highest yield of the year, where do you stand on the transitory permanent debate? Well, I think the, the probability is that the Fed will be a bit slow in terms of hiking interest rates. I mean, the difficulty is that we're still in the world of COVID. I mean, we see that very clearly in Europe, where uh, lockdowns are, are uh, coming back and COVID seems to be moving west. So it was bigger in Asia. Now it's uh, picking up again in Europe. Uh, who knows how long it will take to pick up again in the U.S., but I think that's got to be a question uh, when you look ahead to the end of the year and to early next year. So it's still going to be difficult in terms of the uh, in terms of the economic outlook. And I think the, the likelihood, therefore, is that people are going to be expecting the Fed to hike interest rates, but they're going to be expecting the Fed to be a bit slow. So the curve will probably steepen. And we'll definitely see bond yields break the 170 area that was the high so far this year probably before the end of this year. Um, Guy, it's interesting, isn't it? Because up to this point, the markets have largely flattened the curve. And to many people, that suggests that there is some doubt as to the underlying resilience of this post-COVID economic bounce. Um, do you think the markets have got this story wrong and that the flattening that we've seen here then uh, was a misstep and a misunderstanding? Well, I think there was sort of two, two phases of that. Early on in the year, we saw the curve steepen quite a bit because people were worried that, the, that inflation was picking up and that the Fed wasn't reacting enough. Then they became convinced, starting with the Bank of England, that central banks were going to be tougher. And so we had the flattening move. Now there's a lot of uncertainty. But my suspicion is we probably, particularly after the most recent Bank of England decision, the most recent Fed decision, we're probably going to be moving back into a phase of steepening rather than, than flattening. But the one thing I think that seems very likely to all of us is that uh, across the curve, yields are going to continue to rise. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.